and welcome to the next installment in the Forte Design Systems System C video training series. Now last time we got an introduction to System C and learned about the various types of threads. We created an example using the SC method thread which is a System C thread that executes once every sensitive event. Today we're going to get into the workhorse thread of System C, the clock thread, or SCC thread, which can execute across one, ten, or many thousands of clock cycles. So to understand the important distinctions of the SCC thread and how to best write a module that uses it, let's revisit SC methods for a moment and look at some instructive graphics. Here's the example we saw before, a simple ending function implemented as an SC method thread sensitive to the rising edge of clock. Now let's focus in on just the thread and its relation to clock cycles. One iteration of an SC method thread takes exactly one clock cycle. So every clock edge, the A and B inputs are red, and the result appears on output F like you see here. But in reality, the kinds of high-level designs you create in System C are going to be way more complex than this. So what we're learning here is that SC methods are limited in what they can do. If they're sensitive to a clock, they'll execute in just one cycle. They're fine for simple sequential designs like counters, but you can do that just as well with hand-coded RTL. If you want to do more, that's where SCC threads come in. SCC threads are not limited to one cycle. They can contain continuous loops and very complex blocks of operations and control, and this ability to handle very large algorithms makes them ideal for use with behavioral synthesis. So let's see this in action with a design that's more like the type of algorithms you'll be running in high-level synthesis. Here's a fur filter that has a clock and reset input port, an input data port, and an output data port. For this example, we'll be using a data path of signed 16-bit integers. Now we've already learned how to declare a system C module, so let's do that. We start by including the system C header file and using the SC module keyword to declare our fur module. Clock and reset are single width inputs, so we do SC imports with bool data types for those. Then for our data input and output ports, we use SC in and SC out, and as we said, we want 16-bit integers, so both are SC int 16s. Next, we want to declare a thread function, which we'll call fur main. Now in the simple SC method example we did earlier, we both declared a thread and inlined its functionality all at once. Here I'm going to do things a little different. I'm only going to declare the thread and then put its functionality in another file. This is the way high-level design files are typically structured. When you have designs with lots of big algorithms, you don't want to just inline all that functionality right here in a module definition. Keep the module down to declaring ports, threads, and constructors, and leave all the behavioral functionality to other files. Finally, we have our system C constructor with the same fur name, only this time we have some new things to learn since we're using an SCC thread this time. SCC thread has two arguments which is the name of the clock thread function, fur main, and the edge of clock we want the thread to be sensitive to. Last time we learned about the dot pause and dot neg clock edge functions, and you see here we're simply specifying with clock dot pause that we want the thread sensitive to the rising edge of clock. We have something else new to learn, and that's how to handle resets. To associate a reset condition with a clock thread, on the line immediately after SCC thread, use the system C keyword reset signal is. Reset signal is has two arguments, the name of the reset input port and true or false. True means the reset is asserted high, and false means the reset is asserted low. Then come our close braces for the constructor and the close brace for the module, and we're done. Now back to our fur filter diagram, let's open up the module and see what's inside. Very simple, just five taps with a multiply and accumulate done with constant coefficients. So to implement this, let's start by knocking out this area of the design, the declaration of the coefficients. Uh, this is code you can just insert in the file, so start out with a comment, and this is an array of constants, so in C we use the keyword const, followed by the coefficient data type, and since these coefficients are all positive, and the highest value is 107, an SCUint8 is all we need. We'll call the array coef, and declare it to have five indices, and then with an equal sign, we can just assign a comma-separated list of values inside of braces like this. So let's look now at how to write our fur main thread. Just as if you're declaring the function, you first specify what it returns. And fur main doesn't return anything, so we say void. 
but after this there are some more C techniques we need to learn. Since we're defining the thread outside of the module declaration, we need to somehow associate this fur main function with the module called fur. We could have multiple modules that all have their own member function with the same name, so we need to keep them all straight. This is a concept in C called scoping. We take care of this by first writing the name of the module, fur, followed by a double colon, and then the name of the thread. This double colon is a scoping operator in C, and this expression in effect says, fur main belongs to module fur. It is within the scope of that module. Also, I'm adding a void keyword inside the argument list of fur main just to show that it has no arguments. You don't have to do this, but it's good practice. So before we go on, let's pause for a moment and talk about the overall structure a clock thread needs to have. We talked earlier about how to associate a reset input with a thread, but how exactly do you check whether that reset is asserted in the functionality of the thread, especially since in hardware this thread could take multiple clock cycles? I'm going to first show you a structure for the thread that allows it to handle reset while executing across many cycles. First in the thread body, you just list out any reset functionality your algorithm should have, whether it's resetting local variables or resetting actual output ports. Then you add a wait statement, which in system C means to wait for one clock cycle. Everything from the beginning of the thread to the first wait statement will become a reset state in the generated RTL. Then after this, you put all of the thread functionality in a continuous while loop. The loop is continuous because of this true argument here. Inside here, you will read the design inputs, perform some kind of algorithm, write the design outputs, wait one cycle, and repeat. So in actual operation, the thread first does a reset, and then enters the while loop and will stay there. The only way it will ever break out of the loop is if the reset condition is asserted. Remember we specified that what the reset signal is back in the system C constructor. When that happens, the thread will exit the loop and start over at the beginning. It will revisit the reset code and re-enter the while loop. This is how reset is handled in the multi-cycle clock thread. No matter where in the thread you are, reset signal is will check the status of reset on each clock edge and restart the thread whenever it is asserted. So now that we know this, let's write out the actual algorithm of our fur filter clock thread. In the reset portion of the thread, we'll just reset the output port out p by writing out p dot write with a value of zero and follow that with a wait statement like this. Then we'll write the first line of the while loop. Now back in the filter diagram, we see that our five taps are just a shift register fed by the input port. So let's write just that much in our thread. We need to declare an arrayed variable for the shift register. So here we'll add an array of the same type as the input port, scint16. We'll call it taps and give it five indices. Then down in the while loop, we'll write a for loop that assigns the last tap its value, then the next to last tap, and so on down to the second tap. Then we'll take the newest sample from the input port INP and assign it to the first tap with this line here. Starting at the last tap and making our assignments backward like this ensures no tap values are overwritten. Back again to our filter diagram, all that's left is to implement the multiply and accumulate functionality. This is another operation that can be done iteratively in a for loop. We can multiply the first coefficient by the first tap and store the value then multiply the second coefficient by the second tap and add that to the stored value and so on. Then just write the stored value to the output port. So back in the code, we can declare a temporary variable val to store these accumulating multiplications and then write another for loop that just iterates over all five taps. Inside the loop, we assign to val the product of the coefficient and tap for that particular loop index. Now note we are using the C plus equals operator, which will do exactly what we want. It will add the latest product to whatever is already being stored in val. By the end of the loop, val will be storing the sum of all multiplications in the filter. At that point, we have a new output value, and we simply write it to output port out p using the dot write function. We finish with a wait statement to establish a clock boundary, so when we repeat the while loop and read a new input, it will be done a cycle later. That's it. Just a few lines of code and we've defined a complete fur filter. We can behaviorally simulate this code or run it through Forte Synthesizer to get cycle accurate hardware. And our code is stayed at a high level describing just the functional algorithm. So here's what we've learned. 
We dug a little deeper into what sets an SCC thread apart. It doesn't execute once every clock cycle like an SC method. It can describe very complex algorithms across multiple clock cycles, and it's well suited for behavioral synthesis. We learned how to declare an SCC thread in a system C constructor and associate it with a clock edge. We also learned how to reset an SCC thread using the reset signal is keyword and learned how to specify the assertion level of the reset. Also, we learned how to define a thread outside of the module definition using the double colon scoping operator and saw the use of some new C constructs like for and while loops and array declarations. And we learned how to properly structure the code for a clock thread, which begins with the thread's reset functionality, a wait statement to define the end of the reset state, and a continuous while loop containing the algorithm. We hope you enjoyed learning about System C clock threads. Join us next time for another System C high-level design feature.